When it's time to replace a belt, you need accurate cutting and splicing equipment for a smooth and uniform splice. For live roller drive belt and narrow belt sorter applications, Nita Corporation developed a custom tool set to simplify the endless belt joining process with well-engineered components designed to make splices that last. Each Nita belt splicing kit includes the following documentation, a user manual detailing the kit components, and a guide to proper operation of each component. The tools included in each belt splicing kit are the finger punch tool, which cuts the fingers in the belt, the presetter used to build the splice assembly and hold it securely in place, the impression fabric or silicone pad, which creates a textured surface across the splice when heat is applied to match the texture of the existing belt cover, and the heating press, which cooks the belt and creates the final splice. Additional items you will need which are not included in the kit include heat-resistant safety gloves and heavy-duty cutting shears. Before you begin, take note of these precautions. The conveyor should be locked out prior to beginning the process to prevent accidental startup. Ensure you have a solid surface to place directly beneath the splicing point which will support the finger punch and heating press. And finally, do not use NITA tools on belting that is not manufactured by NITA. NITA belting and tools are designed for mutual compatibility and are tested extensively to ensure consistent, high-quality splices. NITA cannot guarantee belting spliced using third-party tools, nor the use of NITA tools to splice materials for which they have not been calibrated. Please be aware that damage caused to NITA tools by using them on belting that was not manufactured by NITA will not be covered under any warranty. To create quality splices and prevent erratic operation, the heating press needs a constant power supply delivering 110 volts, either directly or through a transformer or power inverter. To prevent the cord from overheating and causing a short circuit, locate the press as close to an outlet as possible so the power cord can be as short as possible. If an extension cord is needed, it must be a minimum of 12 American wire gauge thickness or equivalent. If 110 volt power is not available, use a power generator with a rated capacity of 3500 watts or greater. The heating press temperature gauge displays temperature in degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit, so remain cautious as even low Celsius temperatures represent heat levels that can burn unprotected skin. Always wear heat-resistant gloves when working with the heating press. Now, let's go through the step-by-step -step procedures for belt splicing. NITA offers two different options for belt splicing. If you use the cold press method, the heating press will not begin to heat to the required operating temperature for cooking operations until you press the start button. The hot press method preheats the heating press to the required operating temperature while you are preparing the splice so it's ready to begin cooking operations faster. The hot press method's cycle time requires 18 minutes, while the cold press method requires 40 minutes. To begin using either method, start by plugging in the heating press. When power is first applied, the press will run through a six-second diagnostic check. When complete, the heating press actual and preset temperatures will appear. Now use the finger punch tool to precisely cut fingers in the belt required for splicing. Insert the belt through the guide in the front of the finger punch and feed through until you have approximately six inches of material at the opposite end. Note that the finger punch is marked with an arrow, which is pointed in the direction of belt travel. Ensure the belt is properly seated in the grooves of the hold-down bar. Then, tighten the hand screws by alternating sides to ensure the belt does not move when the fingers are being cut. Use caution not to over-tighten these hand screws. Next, position the cutting plate using one of the two handles to align the index pin with the position of the first hole. Applying stable, even pressure, push down on the cutting handle, notching the first V into the belt. Raise the handle and reposition the cutting plate for the next finger repeating the operation and hitting every hole sequentially to form the fingers. Note, you must hit every hole sequentially to ensure the fingers are cut correctly to align. Once complete, loosen the hold down screws on the scrap end to release the end of the belt and discard the scrap. Then, loosen the remaining screws and withdraw the belt from the finger punch tool. You will now cut fingers on the uncut end of the belt by feeding it through the opposite side of the finger punch tool repeating the same procedure as demonstrated in the previous step. Remember, you must use the opposite side of the finger punch for this end to ensure the fingers cut on both ends of the belt align properly and interlock for splicing. At this point, the belt fingers have pointed ends which will prevent them from sitting correctly in the presetter. 
trim each finger back as close to one quarter of an inch as possible without cutting the aramid strength cords. Now you are ready to assemble the belt in the presetter. Locate the presetter from your splice kit. Place one end of the belt into the mold and align the bottom of the finger joints so they are centered in the presetter. Next, insert the free end of the belt into the other end of the presetter and interlace the trimmed fingers, pushing them together firmly where they meet. To complete the assembly, locate the impression fabric or silicone pad from your kit. If you're using impression fabric, position the fabric on top of the belt, covering the belt fingers. If you're using a presetter with hold down bars, swing both hold down bars into position over the belt, then tighten all four wing nuts to keep the belt in place. If you're using a silicone pad, place the impression side against the belt. Note, if you're splicing a V-guide belt, you will not use impression fabric or a silicone pad with an impression sign. Instead, you will use a silicone pad which is smooth on both sides. Now, position the top plate on top of the impression fabric or silicone pad and between the side rails, ensuring it is properly seated in the presetter groove. Once the belt presetter assembly has been completed, it's ready to be loaded into the heating press. Note, for your safety, wear heat-resistant gloves when working with the heating press. Insert the assembled presetter onto the press plate of the heating press, ensuring the presetter is centered in the press, and quickly close the lid. Then, tighten the handle until it clicks three times. This will ensure proper pressure is applied to the presetter. You can now press the start button. For the cold press method, this will begin the heating process and the timer will start when the press reaches the set temperature. For the hot press method, where the press is already preheated, pushing the start button will start the timer. The green number indicates the current operating temperature of the unit. Confirm the heating press is preheated to the correct temperature for the specific belt type being spliced by checking the temperature indicators on top of the press. The indicator light above the button will illuminate green to indicate the cooking program is started. After the cooking cycle is completed, the heating press will automatically cease heating operations and the cooling fans will engage to lower the belt temperature. Once the green temperature indicator reads 80 degrees or lower, you may now open the heating press. Unplug the power cord from the heating press. You must unplug the unit so the timer resets itself for the next cooking cycle. You may now open the heating press while wearing heat-resistant gloves by turning the handle counterclockwise and pulling the handle forward on the heating press lid. Remove the presetter from the press. Loosen the hold down bars on the presetter. Next, remove the top plate from the presetter. Then, remove the belt from the mold. And finally, remove the impression fabric or silicone pad from the belt. Inspect the belt splice visually. If the splice was completed correctly, the fingers should be joined smoothly and evenly and the splice should be almost visually undetectable. Now, let's examine some problems that can be caused if the equipment is operated incorrectly or key steps are missed during the splicing process. Air bubbles can result from any of four mistakes. One, a cold cook, which means the belt did not cook at a high enough temperature to fuse completely. This is commonly caused by low voltage power delivery to the press if a non-regulated power source is used, which does not supply a constant 110 volts to the heating press. 2. If the impression fabric or silicone pad was not used in the presetter assembly. 3. The fingers were too far apart in the presetter mold. Or 4. The finger ends were overly trimmed. Remember, trim each finger back only as close to a quarter inch as possible without cutting the aramid strength cords. Mismatching or bending belt fingers during assembly in the presetter can also cause splice problems. This is often caused in the splice assembly step if the hold down bars on the presetter are tightened without first double-checking the fingers are positioned together correctly. Failure to center the belt in both the presetter and heating press can also cause problems. Should you find a buildup of urethane on either side of the splice, forming a ridge, it indicates one side of the presetter was hotter than the other during cooking operations, which is caused when the presetter is not centered in the heating press. For even accurate cooking, the belt must be centered in the presetter, and the presetter must also be centered in the heating press to ensure heat is dispersed evenly across the belt. Finally, there may be a problem where, instead of the finger ends not being fused, 
one side of the splice isn't fused. This can occur if the top plate is not seated correctly in the pre-center. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please contact Anita Customer Service Representative at 1-800-221-3689 or online at nita.com. Thank you for choosing Nita products.